For decades, the scenes of this scene, the good times, bad times, and moments in between have been captured through the lens of the Z-Man, photographer Michael Zagaris, whose work in a number of fields exposes us to a backstage world where ideas come to light. Because I've always approached what I do, not so much as a, a photographer or even an artist, but as an actor. And Zagaris performed some of his best roles in front of large audiences. Since the 70s, he's been the official team photographer of the 49ers. He also shoots Oakland A's games at the Coliseum, but he started on San Francisco's sidelines as a teenager. And here at Keysar Stadium, the 49ers' first home, is where Michael's passion for sports photography took flight. And it came with a bit of ingenuity. He essentially snuck in by creating his own photo passes to look like the official ones issued by the 49ers. And Zagaris learned from the ground floor how to capture the NFL. You know, when you're a kid, anything's possible. But he could also play the game. He left San Jose's Bellarmine Prep for a football scholarship and some lofty political ambitions in D.C. at George Washington University. My plan in those days was I was going to, you know, hopefully play in the NFL for a few years and run for Congress, then run for the Senate then be president and have a wife like Jackie Kennedy. But as soon as that came into focus, it all fell apart. As a staff member for Robert F. Kennedy's presidential campaign, Zagaris witnessed firsthand the assassination of a dream. That was pretty much it for me. I was done. I was done with uh, all, just about all the things I'd been taught. He dropped out, landed in San Francisco, and found solace in capturing the sights of the modern sound. One of his subjects, Eric Clapton, helped Zagaris define his vision. He says, um, can I see these? I said, yeah, here, you know, so he starts looking at them. He's looking at the proof sheets. Yeah, right, right, this is great, yeah. He says, um, can we use these? And I said, for what? He says, well, songbooks, albums. He says, look, man, he says, we'll pay you. I said, yeah, sure, that sounds great. After years on the road okay, documenting Jeffrey. tours for the likes of Rolling Stone magazine, Zagaris re-emerged in the sports world upon finding a champion in Bill Walsh, who gave him unlimited access to Camelot. I went to Bill right after he became head coach. I knew his background. I just had a feel for him, and I knew that he was more than a football coach, that he was a historian, that he was a man of letters, that he was an archivist. And I, I, I really had the feeling something special was going to happen. I said, listen, I, I want to document this. Here's a shot. And that he did, showing us the personal side of a dynasty. In both photography and life, for Zagaris, it's all a matter of perspective. I mean, in the end, sports and music, dude, it's bread and games. It's not like saving somebody's life in a trauma room or, you know, being Gandhi or anything like that. Before the age of Nintendo, heck, before Donkey Kong, technology merged with pop culture, not in the arcade, but on British television with super marionation from the fab world of producer-director Jerry Anderson. Now available on a collection of DVDs from the A&E Network, Thunderbirds and other Anderson classics are given new life. As well as looking true to life, these puppets of tomorrow can talk like human beings as well. A magnet fixed to the back of the head receives electric impulses which move the lips in perfect time to the words they speak. Bring me the head of Burt Reynolds. After pulling a few strings, Anderson began to get his work distributed in the States, which led to more opportunities like producing live-action teleplays such as the famed series Space 1999, a show that was not quite Y2K compliant. <laughs> You know, it's always a blast to look back at what previous generations thought the future would look like, especially when their future is our present. <laughs> With the holidays approaching, get the old man what he really wants this year. Marionettes and Martin Landau. It's that good kitsch that will last a lifetime. Fantastic! Since the signing of the Bill of Rights, the United States government has been handing out free money to people for doing absolutely nothing. Seventy years ago, the Department of Agriculture began giving our tax dollars to farmers to burn their crops. 
They call them farm subsidies, but I call it welfare for rich, lazy farmers. Give me a break. I throw away food all the time. The government isn't giving me any money. The National Science Foundation gives $100 million a year in funding to planetariums and observatories to look at the moon. I can see the moon from my backyard. Does that mean I get $100 million? The National Endowment for the Arts takes the cake. They gave Robert Maplethorpe $25,000 to put a whip in his butt. Heck, I'd do that for $10. Give me a break. Why does Sean Clemella play? Of course you know Edith and Archie from the All in the Family theme song. But what you might not know is that Edith and Archie were totally 80s. And for this limited time TV offer, you too can get totally 80s with Edith and Arch. Come on, I mean, well, I swear it's not Deluxe collection contains hits from The Flock of Seagulls. In young reading, I read so far away. I just read. The very best of Cindy Lauper. Little Goyles, they want to have fun. Oh, little Goyles just want to have fun. That's And many others. This CD is not sold in stores, and for good reason. So hurry and place your orders now. Operators are standing by. Nestled in the outskirts of Berkeley is a small business that keeps heads spinning. <laughs> exactly. No, it's kind of a aerodynamic hat. It's an educational hat that cleverly illustrates the power of the wind for children. For nearly uh, three decades, Stacy Samuels has been the chief flight commander of Interstellar Propeller, a hat company with universal appeal. But when the work day's done... Six o'clock rolls around. I'm ready to roll out to the Coliseum. <laughs> The mild-mannered beanie maker transforms into Super A. It's rally time! I actually grew up in San Francisco. I had a misspent youth as a Giants fan, as many of us in the area did back then. Come on, A's! For over 20 years, Super A has been picking his way into the hearts of A's fans at the Coliseum. He's been here since I've been this big. He's amazing. I forget his name. What is his name, though? Oh, I like to think of myself as Super A. But of course, people call me Banjo Man. Banjo Man rocks. One for the hotter, two for the best, three for the best team that ever was, oh, won't you? Look at those swinging A's. There's an urban legend that the Banjo Man is an eccentric millionaire roaming the stands for kicks. Oh, I would be a millionaire if I uh, didn't have a wife and four kids. But Super A is all about the love of the game. And it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old oh, yeah. Reporting from Oakland, <laughs> I'm Lawrence Scott. Video game simulations of professional sports leagues have become so true to reality that they're on the verge of growing tiresome and sadly irrelevant to the average gamer who isn't a sports nut. Take the two dominant pro basketball offerings this year, NBA 2K8 from 2K Sports and EA's NBA Live 08. They are both at once magnificent and somewhat tedious. Without reconfiguring either offering's internal intelligence on player ratings and gameplay settings, you are left with an honest simulation of the modern day NBA, where shots repeatedly clank off the iron and lock down defense wins championships in San Antonio, while virtually every Eastern Conference team is a complete wild card verging on utter disappointment. 
Well, you have to love the transition, Marcus. Then there's the most disturbing trend of all, overt advertising impressions, mimicking our modern marketing culture, but a highly suspect practice when considering that a consumer has already dropped 60 bucks on a video game. Halftime report. 2K8 is the bigger offender with the T-Mobile Halftime Report and the Sprite Slam Cam, which goes beyond the representation of existing signage in a sponsored arena. But credit the creative entities for, once again, not so creatively, immersing brand awareness into our leisure. When you get past superfluous aesthetics and that most of the coaches look terminally ill, these games are highly addictive and certainly gratifying to your typical NBA enthusiast. That's amazing. It's kind of hard to think of how somebody could do this in so little time. It shows you what an imagination can do. Lego is an interesting medium because it has very, uh, it has a lot of restrictions in that you're using small little rectangles to, uh, for the most part, reproduce curves. My name is Nathan Sawaya, and I'm an artist who works primarily with Lego as my main medium. About seven years ago, I challenged myself to try and build something using just Lego, a large-scale sculpture. And uh, it worked out, and I started doing other sculptures using just Lego, and eventually I was getting commissions from all around the world. And so I put a whole museum show together that now tours the world uh, using uh, just my Lego creations. I think something about the museum show is that it appeals to all ages. Um, kids get a real kick out of it. it. If I did the hand, for instance, it would take me like a decade. And I'm a decade old. That's the earth. Yeah. It's awesome. How many days? Yeah. Well, I hope to finish today. Is it art? Uh, great question. Uh, I think it is. I, I enjoy it. It's uh, selling at a fine art status at this point and it's going into art museums. I'm trying to take Lego into a world it's never been before. There's one where there's a blue figure and I really think he's, he's putting himself together and, and that kind of represents birth. And then there's a, a red figure who's kind of rising up out of the Lego, but it, it's really life. It's going through a transition. And then there's a, a yellow figure who's pulling himself apart, and I kind of say that represents death. One of my favorite commissions recently was uh, a large-scale piece. It was a representation of the uh, famous flag raising at Iwo Jima. So this is a famous photograph that we've all seen, uh, very iconic, and then I reproduced that in 3D using just Lego, where the Marines were about three-quarter tall. I love the challenge. You know, people ask me, what is your favorite sculpture you ever, you've ever done? And I always say, it's the next one. future for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. And remember my friend, future events such as these will affect you in the future. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. My friend, can your heart stand the shocking facts about grave robbers from outer space?
H.R. Puff and Stuff. Can't do a little because you can't do enough. Well, that's a defeatist attitude. Still, Rhino Home Video has just released all 17 original episodes of Sid and Marty Croft's H.R. Puff and Stuff on a three-disc DVD collection. The electric Kool-Aid Saturday mornings of your past can be relived over and over again as you get your fix for garish costumes and psychedelic innuendo. You remember the deal? A young boy, Jimmy, playing on a riverbank with a talking magic flute named Freddy, is nearly abducted by Witchy Poo. But whether she wants the boy or the flute is a bit ambiguous. Nonetheless, Jimmy escapes with the flute to the enchanted living island where the mayor, H.R. Puffin Stuff, rescues him. I'm sure it all made sense back in 1969 when the show began airing on NBC. And for the record, the brothers Croft say that H.R. is Royal Highness backwards. And Puffin Stuff was a direct rip from Puff the Magic Dragon. Here's Sid Croft. Puffin Stuff, the title had nothing to do with drugs. I mean, look, look at us. We're still here, you know. Just recovering. Yeah, no. just recovering. <laughs> We're still here. For a streaming video archive of other DVD and video game reviews, check out lawrencescott.com. You can get past the fact that Puff and Stuff has a southern drawl. Well, I'll be horn swoggle, a solid gold talking flute with a diamond skin condition. <laughs> And you don't mind excruciatingly slow-moving plots, then you just might want to take a trip down this short-term memory lane. It's our puffin' stuff. 